Hello everyone! If you're anything like me, you never owned a Super Nintendo growing up, so when the SNES Classic was announced, I immediately pre-ordered it. Unfortunately, it only comes preloaded with 21 games, so I wanted to add more. I would planned on showing you exactly how to do that, as well as run games from other consoles, but I ran into a major snag. I actually did this mod about a year ago, and sometime between then and now, my computer, or HackG2, decided it didn't want to recognize the SNES when connected. Thanks to that, I spent hours debugging for this video, and just about when I'd given up, I tried using a VM with an older version of Windows, and that actually managed to get things working. The only problem was I couldn't record any of the steps since the VM slowed my computer to a crawl. So, even though I can't show you the how, I hope the guide linked below helps. It's really straightforward, you just hook up your SNES Classic to your PC with a micro USB data cable, flash the custom firmware, and then drop in whatever games you want and organize them however you like. Add the RetroArch cores as modules for whichever consoles you choose to use, and then hit synchronize and you're good to go. Now let's take a look at the end result. Here you can see my modded SNES Classic, and I'll be running through games on different consoles and showing some of the things I've added. So first you can see here's the original 21 games, and now I've added a more games folder. Clicking through, you can see we have games separated by console. So let's see the new Super Nintendo games I've added. So here you can see a whole bunch of other games that I've added, and just to show that it works to play them, I'll load up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Turtles in Time. As you can see, the game runs smoothly and you can play to your heart's content. Another great thing about this is that you can now add suspend points for any of your newly added games as well as the existing ones. Now I'll play a Game Boy Color game. I'll just pick one out of a Pokemon Pinball. You can see it loads up and works fine. When you're done playing, you can open up the quick menu for RetroArch. And close out of the game. Then close out of RetroArch. And you'll be given the same option to suspend. There's no real point at that stage. And I can still play Game Boy Advance games as well. So here you'll see me loading up a Pokemon game, run smoothly, that's all we need to do there. Loading up Super Mario Advance, you can see that it also plays very smoothly. 
Finally, one thing that would have ended the console wars back in the day was being able to play Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games on the same console. Or Mega Drive if you're not from North America. So here is Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine playing right off the SNES Classic. Now since I wasn't able to actually show you how to do this mod, I'm hoping some of you can suggest some debugging steps that I may have missed to get this working on my machine again, and if so, maybe I'll revisit the idea and actually go through the steps on how to mod. In my next video, though, I'll actually show you how to mod a different console. Thanks for watching, hope to see you in the next one.